am CTNC. I am CTNC. I am CTNC. I am CTNC. I am CTNC. And I am CTNC. I am CTNC. I am CTNC. I am CTNC. I am If you did, make sure to like this video and channel for more videos like these. You know, our target formation um, is, is, is not about what we do, but it's about to whom do we do that. So the mission is not the what, it's the who. So basically, um, our, our focus people and and with with the, the good news of jesus christ and and and, and that's what we, we put our all our energy in and uh there are variety of things that we do as tools vehicle uh, to reach our people we want to see the transformation of man in all aspects you know it's up his relationship with god is in his relationship with his family and uh, with other believers and it's out his relationship with the world you know, so all those aspects of man affect the person spiritually, financially, mentally, emotionally, you know, physically. Every domain of the man needs to be touched. Because when Jesus died, he did not just die for our spirit of our soul. He died for the entire human being. So if he's bringing restoration, restoration needs to be a full package. So as a church, we, we focus on how do we reach this man to come into unity with, with Jesus Christ because the price has been paid for him to, to, to be saved by then for him to also uh, begin to grow. So we look at uh, 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 three main things we call here, Chain the Nation, Connect, Train and Send. We connect people with God by teaching of the Word of God and through prayer, supplication, and different things. And the, 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 the key connection is knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because he's the bridge. And secondly, we train. So when we talk about train, there's two training at Chen the Nation. It's training for transformation, but in two aspects. There's aspect of uh, discipleship where you learn it to become like your master, and your master is Jesus. And second aspect of, of, of training is how do you succeed on earth? Yes, you want to be like a lawyer. How can you be a successful lawyer? If you are a student, how can you be successful? So whatever area you are in, we teach people here. That's why we have things like Financial Peace University, where we teach classes for how to get a job and how to keep your job. That how we, we teach how do you get promotion at work. Some people don't know that you can learn how to get promoted at work. So those kind of things that we teach so that you can be also successful. Then when we do that, they're sending. We're sending you to reach other people to know Jesus Christ, just like it was done for you, starting in your own family and your network and your neighborhood, you know. When you come to change the nation, this church will be a blessing to you. And once you are blessed, you are at the point where God has visited your life, we expect you to also 
um, uh, for a, a, a lack of a better word, people call mission, 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 actually very key of mission that we do. We use them locally and internationally. Locally here, we take care, for example, the homeless. We provide, we have food bank here. We have clothes that we give to refugees and people who don't have clothes. We make sure that we're taking care of all the need of our own members when somebody loses a job, they're having a hard time. We make sure that we are providing, um, helping them uh, um, to, to go through that transition. And uh, we reach out to our neighborhood with whatever need we may uh, see there. We have very good relationship with the victim. We are there to help them. And so many other things that we do locally here. But internationally, our focus is in what we call School for Every Village Initiative. We have this. For the moment, we have one school in Togo with 200 students, um, 200 more, uh, actually more than 200 students for the moment who are studying mostly for free. And we provide lunch, you know, and we, we take care of them. They have computers and wonderful things is happening in Togo. Our school started in 2018 and now is one of the best schools in, in our district, uh, in the parliament area. So God is moving there and we lay foundation in Ghana. We have some challenges with all the land, but we look forward to finishing that school in Ghana and we're going to go to every country. We're also doing something we call soccer evangelism. We noticed that in Africa, uh, that very cool to bring the good news to them. We provide for them a nice jersey, nice soccer ball, t-shirt, you know, all kind of things that we can give to them. We are also sharing the gospel with them. Of course, we are in church planting. We are planting churches around the world for the glory of God. Uh, for the moment, we pretty much work with our, our church.
Amen. 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 Alléluia. Please can we stand? Why everyone is so cool like that? Please shout and say Alléluia. Shout and say Alléluia. Say Alléluia to our living. God. Amen. It's time to start the service. And we're going to start the service with prayer and commit everything to our Lord, the King of Kings. Amen. The one who is our Father. Working upon the earth every single day, every time and everywhere. Amen. We're gonna pray, pray, and tell him that he is the only God to worship. Pray and thank him. Pray and commit the service unto his hand. Pray for the Holy Spirit to take control of everything, to take control of our hearts. Pray for the word of God to take it. Today, especially, is the, the discipleship day. Jesus, the Lord says, go and make disciples. Today is a discipleship day. Pray and commit our hearts um, into under the control of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can touch our hearts and transform our hearts and make us disciples. Amen. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Tell God to tell you something and to tell someone something today. Amen. Let's pray. Seigneur Père to pick sound. Nous te levons encore ce matin. Tu es le roi des rois, le Seigneur des seigneurs. Nous te bénissons. Nous t'adorons encore ce matin. Nous te disons encore merci pour cette journée merveilleuse que tu as encore offerte. Que ton nom soit béni. Que ton nom soit exalté. Seigneur, nous commettons entre tes mains le service de ce jour. Ce que tu as encore planifié. Ce que tu as encore réservé pour tes enfants. Seigneur, viens le faire. Viens donner à quelqu'un quelque chose. Viens dire quelque chose à quelqu'un. Viens transformer le cœur aujourd'hui. Aujourd'hui, nous sommes là pour enseigner sur le disciple là. Seigneur, toi seul, tu peux toucher le cœur. Toi seul, tu peux transformer le cœur. Toi seul, tu peux faire des disciples. Nous demandons à ce que ton esprit touche le cœur. 
que ton esprit nous fasse des apprenants. Non seulement des apprenants, mais des apprenants qui vont exercer la parole de Dieu. Fais-nous des disciples pour pouvoir acquérir tout ce dont tu as réservé pour nous. Seigneur, nous mettons entre tes mains tous les services, ton serviteur, les gens qui sont encore en chemin. Il y a des gens à la maison. Seigneur, amène les saints et sauf au milieu de nous. Seigneur, nous prions et nous demandons la puissance de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ, par le feu et par le sang. Et nous commandons aux esprits impurs, les esprits des ténèbres, de quitter au milieu de nous tous ceux qui vont arriver avec des esprits impurs, qu'ils soient délivrés au nom de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ. Tous ceux qui ont reçu des missions pour détruire les gens, pour mettre la distraction, Seigneur, nous mettons fin à leur œuvre, nous les détruisons. Que ton nom soit béni. Maintenant et à jamais. Au nom de notre Seigneur Jésus-Christ, nous avons prié. Amen. Amen. Please clap your hand once again to the Lord of Lords. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Is somebody happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yes. Can we give a shout of praise to our God? Amen. The Bible says, Everything is possible for the one who believes. Do I have a believer in the house? So we want to sing, we want to praise to our God because we believe that in Him we can do everything and anything. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we clap for the Lord? All things are possible in the name of Jesus. Yeah. 
Let's open your mouth and praise this mighty God of ours. He deserves our praise. He deserves our worship. He is a mighty God, a great God, a good Father, our Redeemer, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father, we praise you. We praise you, Father, we praise you. You are great. You are awesome. You are mighty. And you reign in victory. You reign in power. You reign, Father. We praise you. You are great, Jesus. You are great, Jesus. You are great, Jesus. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 62, the verse 7 and 8, my salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart to him, for God is our refuge. Amen. So when we want to pour our heart to our God this morning. We want to pour everything that we have to our God. We want to lay down our crowns to him because he is God and God alone. He doesn't share his glory with anybody.
Can we sing it together? Great are you, Lord. Let's go. 
Hallelujah. 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 I want us to take this in the same atmosphere. We want to thank God for protection. He is the one who protects us. He's a merciful God. Last week, he was with us. And then this Sunday also, here we are. Although we went to valley, we went to desert, but he's always there for us. And we are here this morning again by his grace. So we just want to take this opportunity, just say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Some people didn't make it. Some people was in the hospital this time. For you to step down here, I think it's by the grace of God. So I want that to go before the Lord and just, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Without you, we cannot make it. Without you, we are nothing. You are always there protecting us. You are always there with us. We bless your holy name. The road that we went through, the place that we passed through, some people passed over there, but they didn't survive. But you kept us. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for your favor. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for everything that you are doing in our life. In the name of Jesus, receive all the glory. Receive all the honor. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We want to continue the prayer. We want to pray. Romans 8, verse 31 says, If God be this God is for you who can be against you. It's not only He's for you, He's with you, and He's in you. As a preaching to us by the, by the Bishop Darlington. So I want us to go before the Lord this morning and say, Lord, wherever it is, if you are if you are with me, no sickness can take over my body. If you are with me, no evil can go against my, my, my life. So this morning we want to go before the Lord and say, Lord. You are always with us in the name of Jesus. Pray and commit yourself into God's hand. Commit your family into your holy hand. Commit this church into your holy hand. Commit everyone to seek among us. In it. We call for healing, Lord. Lord, reign in our life. Reign in our life this morning. Reign in our life this morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Reign in our life. In the name of Jesus. We're going to continue the prayer. We want to pray. Jesus said, not my, not my will, but yours. The will of the Lord is more important than our will. Whatever we want, if God enter, it thing change. So we want to go before the Lord this morning and say, no, not my will. Not my will for my, myself, not my will for my family, not my will for this church, not my will for this country, not my will for this, you know, uh, uh, the war. So let's go before the Lord and commit every nation and God's head in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are the maker. You are the poor. We come before you this morning. We just want to commit ourselves into your holy hand. Lord, not my will this morning. Not my, Lord. Not my will this morning, but yours this morning. In the name of Jesus. Now your not my will for my family. Not my will for this church. Not my will for this country. But yours, Father. In the name of Jesus. Lord, reign. If you all things are possible, you are the only king who can transform everything. You are the one who can bring a peace where there are not peace. You are the one who can bring healing where there are not healing. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we commit everything unto your holy hand. We commit our life unto your holy hand. Come and take control. Come and take control. We pray for everyone sick among us this morning. We pray for healing. In the name of Jesus, we pray for healing. In the name of Jesus, we pray for restoration. In the name of Jesus, wherever is broke, Father, we commit into your holy hand. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we bless your holy name. We honor you because there's no one like you. There's no one who can do what you can do. You are mighty. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Can we clap the Lord? Thank you for clapping for me. I would say, can we clap the Lord? Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Uh, we can go around, greet someone that you didn't see. Or you never, you know, I saw before. Go ahead and then go, you know, get greet the person.
Amen. Please let's have our seats. We're going to continue fellowshipping after service. God is good. It's good to see everybody in the house of God. Welcome to our Discipleship Sunday. Amen. I'm going to share briefly and we're going to break in our groups. Those of you who are following us online, don't worry, we got you. Um, we will project to you how you can connect during the discussion so you can participate as well. Basically, when um, those of you who are following online, you're going to have a Zoom link uh, number that you're going to put. And then after you put that number, just follow what is there. Actually, you can take a picture of it. That's the password. And I'll meet you there. We'll have our discussion. And those who are here, we're going to break into groups. Uh, if this is your first time, we're going to let you know where you will be. Um, you will be. Amen? And we'll come back to, to close the service. Matthew chapter 6, 9 to 13. Today we want to talk about comment number 3. Jesus instructed his disciples to pray. Amen? So we want to talk about prayer a little bit. Amen? And we're going to go in detail in the future. So, um, Matthew 6, 9 to 13. Great opportunity for somebody who did not read the, book, the Bible the whole week. You can read it now. Let's stand. <laughs> and it's on your screen, okay? At least you can tell God. I read one time at church this week. Amen? All right. Let's read together. Read uh, the version you have there. If you have French Bible, whatever Bible you have, read in your Bible. We read together. In this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven, I'll will be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, your day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtor. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Say, Lord Jesus, speak to my heart. Okay, you may be seated. All right, let's put the context of this passage. The disciple come to Jesus and say, John has taught his people how to pray. His disciple how to pray. Teach us how to pray. I believe it's exactly because of what they were seeing in the prayer of Jesus Christ. You know, I remember one time even they were praying for somebody who was uh, 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 possessed, but they couldn't deliver him. Jesus on the mountain, was on the mountain with three disciples. He comes back and they present the case for him. And he rebuked that spirit and the spirit was gone. The disciples were surprised. They asked a question. It's like, how you do this? You know, and he said, this kind can go only through fasting and prayer. And the disciples have seen Jesus raise the dead. They have seen him do amazing things like, wow, there must be a secret. There must be a way to pray that we don't know. Let's ask the master himself to teach us. So he taught them. And he was teaching them. He gave them what we call the Lord's Prayer. This is not just a prayer for you to repeat. You can do that. It's a very good prayer. But it is like a guide. Amen? In this prayer, you can get a lot of points that can help you in your prayer life. He said, in most versions, it will say, when you pray. In my version, our um, New King James Version that we just read, he said, in this manner, therefore pray. Which means that prayer is not a choice. Hallelujah. God did not say, if you pray. He said, in this manner, therefore pray. Which means that I'm expecting you to pray. Hallelujah. He said to your neighbor, you have to pray. <laughs> Amen. I'm expecting you to pray. Prayer is important and prayer is a must. Hallelujah. If you want to be a strong Christian, you need to know how to communicate with the Father. Jesus said, without me, you cannot do anything. Amen. You cannot do anything. So if you want to be a successful and powerful and effective child of God, you need to know how to pray. And the other point is 
He said, our father, in the small group, we're going to go a little deeper. I just want to make some key points here. Our father, I love the way that he starts with our. Hallelujah. What does it mean to us? God is telling us when you are coming, Jesus is telling the disciples, when you are coming to him, you need to come in the position of a son or a daughter. Hallelujah. If he's your father, then who are you? Amen? Your son or your daughter, right? Hallelujah. So when you're approaching God, your position matter. How do you see yourself? So knowing your identity in prayer is very important. I'm going to give you a, a very silly example. I can have somebody that I love, I care for, coming to me and he said, I need your help for this. And I can have my son coming to me and making the same request. Who takes the priority? Hallelujah. Your son, right? Or your daughter. So don't come to God as you are a stranger. You are coming to daddy. Hallelujah. You are coming to the protector. That's the word father. You are coming to the upholder. Amen. You are coming to the Abba, the, the Father. Amen. The source of your existence. You are coming to the one who holds your life. The author and the finisher of your faith. You are coming to him. You are coming to the omniscient. You are coming to God who has everything and he has no limit. You are coming to the God who is willing to bless you. You are coming to God whose responsibility is to take care of you. Because he's your father. Hallelujah. So the way you approach the throne of grace can impact the way you pray. Hallelujah. Now, we're going we're gonna to see that in a small group to go a little deeper in that text. But let's go to uh, page one for those of you who are writing. Why pray? Amen. If God knows everything, and God is willing to give us everything, what should we pray then? Hallelujah. If today you had all the million of dollars, all your problems are solved, you are healthy, you got everything, you got nothing you need, will you pray? Ask that to your neighbor. Suppose that God just gives you everything. You lack nothing. Will you pray? Huh? What will you say? Thank you. Hallelujah. See, you see, prayer is not only about asking God to give us stuff. Amen? Prayer is a sign of love, fellowship, and communion with the creator. Amen? In the garden, he came down and talked with Adam and Eve. It was never about, give me this. Our mindset is that whenever I go to prayer, I have my list. And we call it prayer list or prayer request. When we meet in the group, what do we say? What is your prayer request? Why does it have to be about request? Now just think about this. You are in this relationship with somebody. Every time they come in your presence, they're asking you something. There's no good morning. There's no, how are you doing? There's no, I love you. There's no, no, nothing, nothing. It's every time you see the phone ring and you look at your call ID, it's Pastor Patrick, it's always to ask you something. The next time you're running away from me. Let's be honest, right? You will say this person is selfish. Why is it that every time he talks to me is about what I can do for them? Why it can't be a normal conversation? Hallelujah. But sadly, that's the way we have moved prayer. We made prayer as something we come to him to give us, to meet, uh, meet our need. Hallelujah. But that's not the way it's supposed to be. Hallelujah. It's supposed to be that, con that time of communion. The mighty God is inviting us. He's one with the Father. Amen. With the Holy Spirit. And he's inviting us in that family. That we will be one with him. Where am I getting this? John chapter 17, 20 to 23. Hallelujah. 
Let's read that. John chapter 17, 20 to 23. See what Christ is doing. He's praying his last prayer before he ascended in heaven. You know that prayer. Okay? Can you project that for us, please, John 17? I'll just read from my Bible. Okay, it's there. Okay. Amen? I do not pray for this alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That means to us today, right? From generation to generation. He's praying also for us. That they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. You see the invitation? That not only will be one with one another, but the mighty God is calling you to be a part of his family. That is beautiful. Hallelujah. And every family must communicate. Amen. Imagine you are in a house where everybody is passing each other. You are hitting each other in the refrigerator. This one is trying to take water. This one is trying to warm up the food at the microwave. And nobody's saying anything. You go crazy. Imagine you are husband and wife. Amen. And you are sleeping in the same bed with this person. They don't talk to you. You go crazy. Hallelujah. Especially I heard that women have double word than the man to, to, to speak on a daytime. Pastor Sachs, I read somewhere they say if a woman has, if a man has 3,000 words to say in a day, the woman has 6,000. They say it's a research. That, that you guys have a double while we speak. Is that true? So you need to have a strategy, right? Call Mama Lina and just say, how are you, Lina? And let her talk. So you can reduce the number of words that she says. So when you finish work, you come at home. She will have very few words and you can sleep at peace. <laughs> Hallelujah. But imagine now you're talking to her, she's not talking to you. Or the reverse. And we say, I love God. You love me, but you can't talk to me. Amen? Prayer is a sign of our dependence or abiding in him. John 15, 5 to 7, we talk about that. If you are abiding me and abiding in you, amen? If you depend on me and I depend, if you, are, you abide in me and abide in you, not that God depend on us, that we depend on him, what happens is that he says you will bear fruit. Amen? We're saying to God, I cannot do it without you. That is why I'm coming to you. I'll give you an example last time in my devotion of last Monday about David. Mighty warrior. He has killed Goliath. He has done powerful things. But when it came time to go to war, he said to God, 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 8, he said, should I go? Should I pursue? Well, I have destroyed armies stronger than these guys. I should just go. No. Because he understood I am not an independent warrior. My strength from, come from God. Not that I'm competent to claim anything for myself. But my competence come from the Lord. If you understand that your competence come from the Lord, you will pray. Because you want to consult him. You want to do his will, not your own will. Papa Leon was talking about the will of God earlier here. That we don't do our own thing as Christians. We depend on him. Hallelujah. So prayer is an expression of submitting our free will and the, the, the supremacy of God's will. Hallelujah. Psalm 115, 1 to 16. You can read it when you get a chance. Where David is saying, not unto us, O God, but unto you. Amen. Amen. But to your name, give glory because of your mercy, because of your truth. So we are approaching God and we're saying, we're taking our will. We're taking our desire. We're taking all our selfishness. We lay down and we said, have your way. 
God said, Leo, I give you free will. You can decide. I put in front of you life and death. Choose life. All right? He instructs you to choose life, but he doesn't chain you. You have that free will. So when you go to pray, you say, God, what can I do? What you are doing, you are taking your free will and laying in the feet of Jesus Christ. Say, because you know better. Because you are the omniscient. Because you are the omnipotent. I don't want to do it. Moses understood that. He said, if you don't come with us, I will not go. I will not move an inch if you are not going to move with me. Because he understood that he depend on God. So prayer is every time you pray, you are saying, I acknowledge I'm nobody. And God is everything. When you don't want to pray, you are saying you are all that. And therefore you are God for yourself. Since you are God for yourself, then solve your own problems. But if you are a bound servant, you are the responsibility of your master. Touch your neighbor said, are you a bound servant? If you're a bound servant, you don't decide what, how, what you do, how you wake up, where you do. You don't do that. God can just wake you up in the 3 o'clock in the morning and say, pray. Say, God, I'm tired. Say, pray. Because you're a bound servant, what do you do? You pray. God bless you. And I love this. I heard from Dr. Miles Morrow. He said, prayer is giving God permission to get involved in human affair. I'm like, how can you give God permission? God is a mighty God. I said, Doc, what are you talking about? You're preaching some wrong stuff here. God is so sovereign. He can do whatever he want to do. How am I going to give him permission? But he said one point that got in me. He said, God said the earth he has given to the sons of men. So if today I take my house, I give to my brother here. I said, this is your house now. Hallelujah. He get the key. Amen. It's mine, but I give to him. And then he's coming from work. He's seeing me inside. Painting, doing whatever I want to do. It's a problem. Right? Even when you're renting the apartment. If they want to come, they will send a notice. We just want you to know that we'll come in your house because we're doing some maintenance. Because when you enter into that covenant, that contract, I mean in the apartment, you have agreed that this one is now your address. You understand? The landlord cannot use that place as his address anymore. But it doesn't belong to you. You are just renting. This earth belongs to God. Hallelujah. But he gave us as human beings to manage it. How do I know? Genesis chapter 1. Hallelujah. And chapter 2. And when he created men, what did he say to them? Take care of the garden. Amen. You are the manager. You are in charge. So if you're in charge, whatever is happening here is your problem. Now, if you want me to come and manifest myself, then you need to invite me. Hallelujah. So when we are praying, we are saying, that's why he said to us, he's, he's saying to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3, he said, call upon me. It's like God is begging you, he said. He said, call upon me. I will show you great and mighty things you don't know. God, why can't you just show me? He said, no, 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 you got to call upon me. I'm a God of principle. The earth is yours. I gave it to you. You want me to move? You want me to heal? You want me to deliver? Call upon me. This is why he said he was looking for somebody who was standing in the gap. Someone who's going to stand in the gap. Because if there is no one calling him, there is no movement. That is why God is looking for worshiper. And that is why God is looking for an intercessor. Hallelujah. And worship is just another form of prayer. Hallelujah. 
So if you are lazy in prayer, you are good. The devil will play game with you. That is why you can be watching a movie and you go three hours, your eyes is open. The minute you begin to read the word of God and pray, you start sleeping. What do you think? You're reading any kind of book, just normal book. You're enjoying it, second page, three page. You can't put it down. You keep, as soon as it's the Bible, you start sleeping. It's a spiritual warfare. Because when you know the word, now you have the jurisprudence. And when you come in the presence of God with the word, it's like somebody, a lawyer, who's coming in the presence of the judge with the law. The honor, it is written. <laughs> Hallelujah. The same way you will come, God, it is written. You will never forsake me or leave me. It is written, by your stripe, I'm here. It is written, you are not just running your mouth. You are speaking the word of God back to him. And he said, I put my word above myself. I will not violate my word. Yeah. Hallelujah. Prayer with the word of God will move things. Amen. That is why as a Christian, you must know how to pray. The disciples understood that, so they come to Jesus. They say, we want to know. Now the question comes here, who can pray? When you read in the book, of, in the Old Testament, you see something there. Uh, Psalm 65 verse 2. What does the Bible say there? Psalm 65 verse 2 says, read with me please. All you who hear prayer to you all flesh will come. Amen. Ask your neighbor, are you among the all flesh? Because you hear prayer, we have a certainty. God is assurance is telling us, I hear prayer. And that's why you have to come to me. Not only I hear prayer, I answer prayer. I may not just all answer it the way you want, but I'm going to answer it. It may be a good no, but I'm going to answer it. But if I give you a no, because there is a yes behind that no. Hallelujah. Psalm 24 verse 3 to 5 says that who will come in the mountain of the Lord is the one who has a, a pure heart and he has what? A clean hands. When I look at this verse, I'm like, then nobody's qualified. Hallelujah. I said, never are you, are you qualified? This is why in the Old Testament, they had to do the atonement using the animal, right? Hebrew chapter 9 verse 7 talks about that. They have to sacrifice animal and then they would take the, 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 the blood, all right? Can you show me the, the, the page number 2? Uh, show me that where, where I have uh, the, the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant, please. All right. So you have, you, have, you have this Ark of Covenant here, and you have right here, that place there, like here, it's called the Mercy Seat. You have these two cherubim looking at one another, and then that's the place the high priest is supposed to put the blood at the mercy seat. Why? So that when God come, amen, he will see the blood, which is a symbol of the animal that died as a sacrifice for the sin of people, and God will be satisfied and will not kill because the wages of sin is what? Death. So this, normally they have to die because of our sin. But because the animal was sacrificed, when God comes with his Mighty power, not because he hates us, but because he hates sin. And because he's loving, but he's just, he has to punish sin. So when he's coming in his anger, and because there was a blood there, what's going to happen is going to be a pain. But they had to do that over and over and over again. Are you not glad that when Jesus came, everything changed? Amen. He went in one time. Hallelujah. Not with the, the, the blood of the goat or the or a cow. 
but he brought his own blood. And when the blood is sitting in the mercy seat, it's not sitting to cover our sin. He came to wipe away our sin. That is grace. Hallelujah. That Jesus did not come to cover your sin. He came and removed it totally. Amen. Amen. And then the blood is sitting there. And every time God wants to get angry. And he looks at the blood of his son. No wonder he's sitting at the right hand of the father. No wonder he's still having his wound. Where the blood came from. So every time daddy want to get mad. He turn around and he see the wound. He said, I see the blood. I see the blood. And I'm satisfied. This is why the Bible is telling us in the book of Hebrew that we can pro approach boldly. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See, the people of the Old Testament, when they look at us, they envy us. We, we don't have to bring cow. We don't have to bring goat. Nobody has to die anymore. We have access in our bathroom, in our cars, wherever you are, on the mountain, in the valley. I mean, if you're going to go pray in the mountain, it's not because God is going to answer you because you're in the mountain. You're going to pray in the mountain because it's quiet. Amen? Amen? But you can be on the mountain and get no answer. I can be in my car and get an answer. So he has nothing to do about the place anymore. Amen. Hallelujah. Say to your neighbor to be continued. God bless you. I want you to uh, stand and we're going to pray quickly and we're going to break into group to discuss this. We're going to continue this next time. My prayer is that you're going to become crazy in prayer. Amen. You're going to become a dangerous person for the kingdom of darkness when you know how to pray. Your house will be covered by fire. Hallelujah. Everywhere you walk, the enemy knows that I can't mess with that guy. I want you to pray for the person next to you. Say, God, revive the life of prayer. Move us from microwave prayer to three minutes, God, I love you, I thank you, amen, to some serious moment of prayer where Jesus is asking his disciples, say, can't you pray with me at least one hour, one hour? which means that that's a minimum. And if you're spending a whole, a whole day, you did not spend one hour in a prayer, your life of prayer is sick. You need healing. Pray for healing. In a life of prayer. Life of prayer. Revive prayer. It is in prayer that we get revelation. It is in revelation that we get instruction. It is in your instruction, Father God, when we apply that we get the accomplishment and in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I pray for this time of small group that everyone will be blessed and that life will be changed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen? All right, you may be seated. Um, over here, Miss... Uh, Miss uh, Lavette is going to be here. Everyone that uh, uh, is uh, in Miss, Miss Lavette's team and everyone that is in Miss Lina's team, uh, I mean Miss Aline's team, go there. And Miss Lina's team, go to, uh, uh, to uh, Miss Lavette also. Miss Kekeli team, you go with Mama Feza and Mama Feza team. Brother Kosi's team, right here. And... Um, but, uh, Pastor Fred and Miss Lana with the, the loving kids, they go in that room. Everybody else, 
come to Brother Stephen. All right, let's do this quick so we can start a discussion. Online people, join in. Uh, I'll meet you there. Yeah, get Mama Lina to come over there for you too. These are amazing. Wow. Wow.
Praise the Lord. Let's get back together. I will collect all the questions and it's going to become a part of a teaching also so we can respond to, the, respond to them. Please just get in your place and uh, we're going to start closing our service. Amen. Amen. I hope every one of us have something you're leaving behind, and something you're taking with you. Hallelujah. And the Lord will bless you for that. And I hope we have made commitment. Our group leader will reach out uh, for commitment. Next time, I want to get deeper into this teaching. Uh, Papa Leon start getting ready to come uh, and finish up the service. I want to continue this, uh, this teaching and talk about other things. For example, the place to pray. Amen? Should we pray on the mountain for God to answer us? Should we pray in the river for God to answer us? Should we pray, pray in the closet? Or should we pray outside? Should we pray? We, we look at that. Where did Jesus pray? And we want to look at uh, things we should bring in prayer. Should we use water for God to answer our prayer? Should we use oil, salt? Should I have a ring that when I wear that, then the power is there? Should we use rosary as point of contact? You're looking at me strange. Amen. Should we use talit, prayer cloth, kupa, anuka menorah? Should we use that? Hallelujah. We're going to look at that biblically because today in the church we're bringing stuff. There's a confusion between revelation and doctrine. Hallelujah. As many times Jesus will heal somebody, he touched the mud, for example, and he healed someone. He put his saliva and told the person to go wash himself in the water. But he was not doing that for every person. Sometimes we see Jesus touch the lepers. Sometimes he spoke a word. Hallelujah. So Jesus was working with the rhema of God for that moment, for that need. But he was not making that to become a doctrine. We have Paul, people taking a handkerchief, put in his body, and went to touch the people who were sick and were healed. Does it mean that now we should pray with handkerchief? Now let's look at life of Paul. Was that the model? That's the faith of those people. Amen. But we are instructed to pray in what name? Jesus' name. Don't you never say Jesus is enough? <laughs> Hallelujah. God can tell you, he said, jump, you'll be healed. But it doesn't mean you start a church where every time people have to pray, they start jumping. It was for that day. <laughs> Amen. That was the rhema for the moment. But it's not to become a doctrine. Hallelujah. So we're going to look it into those things so that we remove all this unnecessary gimmick that you can come in the presence of your papa the way you are and just use the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Share beloved. We had powerful men of God like Aida Usa from Nigeria. We didn't see them with handkerchief, with crazy stuff. They said the name of Jesus and they raised the dead. Hallelujah. What happened? We had in Congo, Aidina Bala, raise the dead, heal the sick, deliver people in Jesus' name. Nothing else. What happened now? People got to drink water. People got to get salt. People got to do these crazy things. We got to put some candles. We got to do this, this, and this. What happened? Hallelujah. We're going to look at that in the Bible. We're not going to attack nobody, criticizing nobody. We're going to look at it in the Bible. What does the Bible say about prayer? Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, all the group leader. This is uh, offering time. Blessing time. Offer time. Okay, so get ready. Uh, we're going to pray and uh, commit. If the usher can bring the offering ba baskets, uh, they will lead us. Let us pray. Let us stand at our feet. And let us pray. We have a three way to give. So that's what's projected on a, we can give. If you need the envelope, raise your hands and someone will come to you and the usher will bring the envelope to you. If you want to go do cash up, you can do it. If you want to do zeal, Vermo, and all those ways that we are using to give our tithe. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We honor you. There's nothing that we have that was not given to us by you. Father, we came here and we commit our offering, tithe and offering at your holy hands. We ask to bless it so we can do that for the call that you, know, you, you call us to do. And then bless your people, bless the source of their income. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're going to follow the usher direction. And you can, you are coming this way. You are living. Amen. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are kind. Lord. Amen. Do we have uh, anyone visiting us? This is your first time to fellowship with us. Can you please? Anyone? That's your time that you are more us, fellowship with us. Can you wave your hand? All right. I think everybody is from the house. <laughs> God bless you. Uh, we could do better next, next week. But let me invite Pastor. Amen. Uh, after service, all the men, if you're a man, lift up your hands. Nowadays, we have to check it out. If you're a man, lift up your hands. Read, please, after service, just step on your left and um, 
Brother Pati will, would like to talk with you. He's the president of the men. Amen. The ladies have something coming up. I don't know if the video is ready. They can play that. For the month of May, there's a conference for the ladies. If you're ready, play it, please. If not, I will just say it. are excited to announce to you that we have a women conference coming up on May 10, 11, 12. May 10, 11, and 12. Uh, we want you to mark your calendar. Please mark your calendar. May 10, 11, and 12. We are going to have a great guest speaker among us, and it's going to have a we're going to have a great time of fellowship empowerment great inspiration and celebration you don't want to miss that invite your friends family co-worker or your colleagues all ladies to come over thank you and god bless you amen that's why i love video if i talk i'll talk five minutes that was good thank you sister kekeli yeah we at the end of the service and uh, next sunday is our building found sunday can you turn to your neighbor and say thank you don't ask me why I'm going to tell you about it now. I, 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 was, I was looking at a, a letter um, because I wanted to use that letter to write a new letter to our partners, people who have changed the nation outside of, of, of this church, and ask them to help with a building found. And I was looking for a letter that is already written so we can just adjust it and send out. Uh, and the letter was written five years ago, and... Steve is the one who helped me to edit it. So I, I saw that I, I sent it to him. I said, look at this letter five years ago. We were asking for $450,000 to pay the building off. And now, guess how much we need to pay the building off? You know how much? 98000 Which means that in five years, we paid $352,000. Now you need to clap better than that. That is amazing. I look at that Papa Sachs, I was like, wow, this is good. And I need to stop on Sunday and say thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. For your giving. May God continue to prosper you. So go home this week and pray. Say, Lord, it's only 98,000. Am I the one you're choosing to write that one check and finish it? Then do it. Are you calling me to do 1,000? Do it. Are you calling me to do 50, 25,000, 10,000? Whatever, $5, $10, whatever God is putting in your heart and you say, I don't want to stay behind. I want to be a pact of people who will get rid of this debt so that we can focus better loving people in this church, in our neighborhood, and around the world. Amen? So come prepare with whatever I love Paul say, resolve in your mind. Amen? What you're going to give. We're not pressuring you. So go pray. Say, Lord, I want to be a part of it. What is it that you're putting in my hands? But come determined to give something that will be a blessing so that we can get rid of this and see the glory of God. Amen? Stand on your feet. Share the grace together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Say, Lord Jesus, give me strength to return in the life of prayer. This is my year of transformation. Transform my prayer life in the name of Jesus Christ. I am all in. I am committed and I will see my life of prayer move to another level. Give me revelation this week about what I should do for the advancement of your kingdom in Jesus mighty name. May the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face shine upon you be gracious unto you. 
in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We love you. Have a fantastic week. All the men, please on my left. If you see a man going out, tell them please come in and be on the left.